our E21 CMB6 has been upgraded and we put in a new row of buttons so you can have true program preview row selection. We have an exciting new concept, the smart switch menu, and then a status display, which you find on many of our other new controllers. And what you cannot see here is that it's pole powered, but you can of course figure it out because it's all powered by only an ethernet cable, which carries power and communication. And this is all possible because we have shrunken our CPU platform to almost nothing. Let's look at the features on this controller. So we have um, the preview row as I push this. I'm changing the preview source, program source. I have cut, auto, a slider, which is like uh, tr making transitions. And then we have buttons up here assigned to enabling uh, keyers, upstream keyer downstream key, you have a shift key. The shift key basically uh, allows us to assign a different um, alternative function to uh, keys, like in this case, I can enable uh, downstream key or two um, with this. And it also gives me access to um, uh, select sources from media player. So um, all this functionality is actually completely configurable using a web interface. And I want to introduce that to you. It's on the screen behind me. And the way you configure your controller is by means of a pen. So with the tip of the pen, you push and hold the configuration button on your Skyhook controller. And then uh, you'll be able to access the internal web server of the device. You get this interface and you can change how your controller works. Let's take a simple example. This button, button number one right here. I press it, click it with my mouse, and the web interface jumps down to the section that specifies how button number one works. So over in the first column, you can see how it works in the normal state. And in the normal state, it will select source number one on program. Let's see what other options there are. I can uh, decide between ME1 and 2 if I had a 2ME switcher. I can certainly select between many sources. You can even see some of the more alternative sources down in the bottom of the list actually, and that's quite clever. You can assign it to multi-viewer one, source one. So that button would be assigned to any source you have configured inside your ATEM switcher to be in a tile number one on your multi-viewer and so forth. That's quite cool. You also see the function of the shift key is um, implemented right here. So as I hold down the shift key, I'm not gonna put source number one on program, but source number 11 on program. So in that way, although this controller is currently hooked up with an old ATEM 1ME production switcher, it has only eight inputs it could also communicate with a large 20 input ATEM switcher. So um, there was one fun function I didn't show you. As I press this button, the controller changes state to select media player still. Actually, the lower row will still give you access to program preview. You can see as I press the buttons here and the red one indicates what is on program. Um, this is a, a concept that we have made that makes it easy to condense this functionality into a single row. Um, and then the, the top row will allow you to select media uh, player stills. So as I press here, you can actually see up here on the screen, you can see the name tag that this one selects. It's changing as I press this one. And that's because the controller was brought into a different state that changed the layout of the buttons. As I press this one again, we are back to a program and a preview row. So how is that implemented? Also with the awesome web interface. So here you see that column number two gets into play as I change the state of the controller by that button. So when I press the button I just showed you before, button number one, you see that it's gonna put media number one on media player one. If I hold down the shift key, I didn't show you that, but then it would be media number 11 that is put on media player one. And again, it's really, really easy to change these things. If it's media player one or two, it's just a matter of what you select here. And 
even if you want to completely remodel what function this button performs. And that goes for any function here. You can select between almost any feature you have in your ATEM switcher. There's a, another concept which is new and really exciting, and that's the smart switch. The smart switch is a, a special type of menu we have developed. As you press the switch, you toggle through different options. Okay, so as an example, I've now come to something called ME1 Mix. So, uh, and it says 25 fr frames. So as I turn the knob, you see that I'm changing the dissolve rate of the mix transition on ME1. As I turn the knob, I change this value. If I press the knob, I can fine tune the value. Otherwise it changed in uh, steps of five frames. Okay, if I press the button again, it's gonna bring you to auxiliary one. Currently we have camera two on auxiliary one. I can change that by uh, turning the encoder here. Auxiliary two, auxiliary three. This is something called state, it's a bit advanced. I'll just pass by that one. Uh, here we can change the transition type on the uh, ME1, the transition style, and here we can activate a fade to black function. So how are those features implemented? Surely it can't be configurable. Yes, it can. And that's again, thanks to the universal firmware we have here. So let's go to the top of the controller because um, if you wanna change any interface component, what you need to do is to click it on this graphic. So you go smart switch menu, we wanna change that. And then you see over here in the first column, anything you see here is a function of the smart switch menu. You can see the first three ones are auxiliary sources for auxiliary one, two, and three. Then we have the system state change, which I bypassed to demo. Let's see if we can find the transition rate. And yes, we can. If you look here in the bottom, you see ATEM transition rate for ME1. We want to cycle through. And if you want to add features, you simply click the plus icon and then you select from the beautifully long list of ATEM features that you can squeeze into your smart switch menu. You can also subtract functionality, which you don't need by simply selecting blank and then save. Because if you press the save button, and that's the magic, it goes on on the controller. You have the whole interface for this on the controller. And as you press save, it gets saved in the internal memory. So next time your controller boots up, it will act accordingly. And that's the power of the Skahoi Universal Firmware.